in the week that I've been put on the right wing list, we ask, what's the point in having these labels when both parties are funded by the same corporate donors? And would a right wing person wear this? <coughs> Glory be to each of the 4.9 million awakening souls refusing to live on a daily diet of tripe and slime pumped out by a media machine that wants you stupid. Well, no more. We are awakening. We are questioning. We're refusing to succumb to their lies. Hey, guess what we found out the other day? That the Democrat Party are accepting funding that's known as dark money from corporate donors that ultimately means that the Democrat Party will never be able to fulfill their presumed and stated mission to help ordinary Americans. Okay, so let's have a look at this story. Luke Savage in Jacobin writes, the ambient influence of big money in American politics has become so overwhelming it can be difficult to discern where institutionalised bribery stops and anything even resembling the public interest begins. Just as ambient, fittingly enough, is the sound of mainstream politicians from both major parties condemning and decrying its corrupting influence, usually while finding creative new ways of leveraging it themselves. America's campaign finance debate has thus become both an arms race and an unconvincing pantomime act with more than enough hypocrisy to go round. This here, our sources, which we link to in the description, this is Genuine Journalism by Luke Savage from Jacobin, which I believe is left. Is that left? I mean, I don't, I don't track anymore. This is what journalists should be doing. It is out there if you're willing to look for it. Get out of the mainstream. Get into the tributaries of truth. Every election cycle, it seems, now yields new innovations in shadowy fundraising, paired with increasingly absurd declarations from across the spectrum that raking in huge sums from wealthy people and powerful lobbies is the only way anyone can possibly compete. And, as some insist, win on the scale necessary to purge big money for good. I'm only taking this big money to get rid of this big money. Bernie Sanders, of course, was memorably funded by small donations. That was one of the things people were excited about by Bernie Sanders. And it seems to me that a good faith gesture from both political parties, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, would be, hey, we're not going to accept that money anymore. One of the things that personally fascinates me is that over the last week or so, I've been condemned for being right wing. I know some of you are right wing and are saying, oh, well, you are a bit right wing, really, Russell. And like, there's nothing wrong with being right wing. And do you know what? I agree. Right wing, left wing, whatever. But what I'm saying actually is that neither of these parties are representative of the interests of ordinary people. And we should start to look beyond these labels. Even doing a story like this one, where we criticise the Democrat Party for accepting more dark money than the Republicans, could be be used and perhaps might be used by Democrat leaning media institutions to say, see, Russell Brand is right wing. But pointing out that someone is corrupt shouldn't be what bans you from a particular ideology. That's the problem. The problem is the corruption. Hey, excuse me, we're corrupt. And if you point out that we're corrupt, you can't be in our gang anymore. I mean, is that what it's come down to? You know, I also know that loads of you, because I read the comments below, and I'd love you to comment on this video, said like, you know what they're going to do? They're just going to cut all the bits of you going, if caring about corruption is right wing, then I'm right wing. If anti-war makes me right wing, then I guess I'm right wing. If wanting big pharma to be regulated and for ordinary Americans to buy drugs at a reasonable price is right wing, then I'm right wing. If wanting to end the lobbying of political parties to stop the will of ordinary people being realised democratically is right wing, then I'm right wing. If criticising political figures, regardless of their party political affiliations and partisan identity, is right wing, then I'm right wing. And if reporting on the wealth transfer and the corruption of billionaires worldwide is right wing, then I'm right wing. Then I'm right wing. I'm right wing. I'm right wing. Right, did you see? Russell Brand is right wing. I'd like to see you know that, Joe Rogan. Is my tie not big enough? Get me a bigger one! Put an apple inside there! Liberal figures tend to be more vocal than their Republican counterparts about the need for campaign finance reform. We must also empower hardworking Americans in our democracy by building a 21st century campaign finance system to increase and multiply the power of small donors, wrote Nancy Pelosi just before the Democratic victory of the 2018 midterms. Wealthy special interests shouldn't be able to buy more influence than the workers. This is Nancy Pelosi. This is Nancy Pelosi, by the way. Consumers and families who should be our priority in Washington. Nancy Pelosi. I told you it's Nancy Pelosi saying that. A few weeks later, an assorted donor coalition of real estate developers, hedge fund managers and senior corporate operatives backed Pelosi against progressive critics as her bid to become speaker. Now, if when you hear me say that, what you think is, 
Oi, you're criticising Nancy Pelosi. You must be right wing. Instead of, oh, wow, Nancy Pelosi, an elected official who says that it's her job to ensure that small donors are represented. Forget donors. What about bloody voters? You shouldn't have to give one penny. The vote's meant to be enough. You've got the tax money already, don't you? And then turns around and accepts money off big business. But that's the problem. Not people pointing out that that's the problem. Right? Left. Mayor Pete will not be influenced by special interest money, and we understand that making this promise is an important part of that commitment, read a 2019 statement from Pete Buttigieg's presidential campaign, which soon after found the candidate himself mounting a spirit defence of his many donations from billionaires. Buttigieg's post-presidential trajectory has since been largely financed by dark money. It's easier to see the relationship between the way his name is spelt and the way his name is said than the stuff he says when he's trying to be elected to the stuff he does when he's been elected. Yeah! Corruption, the influence of money, touches every decision that gets made in Washington, declared Elizabeth Warren. It's like they know it's wrong, right? They know it's wrong. So they say, hey, you know what's bloody wrong? It's bloody people taking money. So we won't be doing any of that. We're mostly focused on children, actually. Are the children, are the children all right? Are the children all OK? Yeah, I think so. Good. Right. Now get me fucking Mark Zuckerberg. Whatever issue brought you here today, said Elizabeth Warren, I guarantee if there's a decision to be made in Washington, it's been touched, pushed, massaged, tilted over just a little so that the folks with money do better than everyone else. Though a pledge to reject lobbyists and super PAC money remained on her official website, Warren would ultimately stay in the race with the help of a single nearly $15 million contribution from a wealthy California donor made through a super PAC. So that's not like that I'm right wing. It's pointing out that there is no left wing. There isn't one. There is no left wing. A left wing pie will go, we ain't doing that. We want to represent the people. If all the candidates want to get rid of super PACs, count me in. I'll lead the charge, announced Warren. In a minute, I've just got $15 million. I'll lead the charge now. Or I'm going to take my $15 million back. There's not going to be a charge. Well, there is a charge. It's $15 million, <laughs> announced Warren in what was quite transparently a violation of her own pledge. Rhetorical gymnastics of this kind are regularly used by powerful liberals to decry corporate influence peddling while simultaneously acceding to its core mechanics. Newly published reporting from Kenneth Vogel and Shane Goldmarker at the New York Times in fact suggests that Democrats are now actually outflanking the GOP when it comes to their reliance on dark money. Now, if you're a Republican and thinking, like, ah, see, then you obviously think it's wrong as well, right? So what do these labels right and left actually mean if neither of the parties are interested in you and me? And doesn't it suggest that we should be looking at new independent movements that put aside the kind of issues that make us all hot and bothered and sweaty and frustrated and focus on breaking down power, breaking down centralised power and running our own communities democratically, right? Left. As Vogel and Goldmarker write, for much of the last decade, Democrats complained with a mix of indignation, frustration and envy that Republicans and their allies were spending hundreds of millions of difficult to trace dollars to influence politics. Dark money became a dirty word as the left warned of the threat of corruption posed by corporations and billionaires that were spending unlimited sums through loosely regulated non-profits which did not disclose their donors' identities. Then came the 2020 election. Spurred by opposition to then-President Trump, donors and operatives allied with the Democratic Party embraced dark money with fresh zeal, pulling even with and by some measures even surpassing Republicans in 2020 spending, according to a New York Times fascists analysis of tax filings and other data. The analysis shows that 15 of the most politically active non-profit organisations that generally align with the Democratic Party spent more than $1.5 billion in 2020 compared to roughly $900 million spent by a comparable sample of 15 of the most politically active groups aligned with the GOP. It's as bleak and dystopian a political picture as you could imagine. Organised money not only buying influence on an unprecedented scale, but increasingly doing so in an atmosphere of near total secrecy, such that much of that influence can only ever be inferred, while some of it escapes notice altogether. But that doesn't surprise you, right? Let me know in the comments below if that's how you think politics is run. You know that, right? It's also as good an occasion as any to consider the fundamental cynicism of institutional liberalism's erstwhile critics of corporate and dark money. There can be no doubt that 2020 served up many tough lessons for genuine left politics, but amid the darkness, there were also a few flickers of light when it came to political fundraising. Among other things, the Bernie Sanders campaign's remarkable capacity to raise huge sums through small donations showed that it is indeed possible to reject the poison chalice embraced by so many liberal and conservative politicians. So if it's sort of possible, then what is the reason? They're saying, oh yeah, no, you've got to do it. There's no choice. Oh no, you can do it. No, I prefer it. 
With plenty of help from wealthy donors and sumer packs, of course, the Democratic establishment ultimately swatted down Sanders' challenge and went on to reclaim majority control of the United States government. And according to Jimmy Dore in my podcast the other day, Hillary Clinton headed up a vital committee that was able to negate Sanders' influence, which is literally corruption, but you'll have to check that out with Jimmy. Incidentally, pledging yet again to get tough on the insidious influence of organised money and promising a sweeping array of liberal reforms. If people are wondering and curious why people like me are getting labelled as being on the right and criticising what was formerly regarded left-wing politics, you just have to look at this list of people saying, oh, money's got to be kicked out of politics because we know it's wrong, we know it's wrong, then taking the money. That's hypocrisy, it's dishonesty, it means that it's pointless voting for you. A year into Joe Biden's era, many, if not most of these reforms now look dead on arrival, as does any serious effort to roll back the ambient corruption at the heart of America's political system. We're going to make an effort to roll back on this ambient corruption. Is it a serious effort? No. Illustrating for the umpteenth time that you cannot simultaneously claim to champion anything resembling a progressive political program while in a de facto coalition with the very forces ranged against it. Otherwise, what you're left with is rhetoric. You know, you're just recognising, oh, perhaps it'll be enough if we just say that stuff and never do anything, because then we could continue to have the money and continue to have the rhetoric. You know, really, what values and principles are is, shit, it's going to be hard to say no to this money, but we're going to have to say no to this money. And don't you actually think, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm a person. If I saw a politician say, listen, I'm not going to accept that money, so I'm going to have less of it, so I'm going to get really negative media coverage... But uh, I think it's really important that I remain untainted by that corporate money. So you can trust me on that. And I swear to you, bank account's open. You can watch it in and out. It's on the website, in fact. So you can trust me. I mean, I'm in. I'm in with you. Principles. That means that the principle remains firm. Arrow straight. Bam. Hits the mark. Instead of, well, what's convenient today? Taken together, the lesson in all this is that embracing America's depraved campaign finance regime is less an ambivalent surrender to political reality than it is a conscious ideological choice. Yeah, that's what they want. That's what they really do. And it's wearying to know that. It's exhausting. I don't know how they summons up the enthusiasm to continue to support them. I don't know what kind of ideological Viagra they're popping that keeps them hard for these hollow promises. Were they actually serious about pursuing much of what they officially want, establishment Democrats could probably decide to be something other than a party aligned with corporate America and content to filter its agenda through special interests in perpetuity. As things stand, however, the liberal marriage of progressive posturing and corporate cash instead guarantees a repeat of the same old pattern. Democrats decrying the influence of big money while insisting, as they did in 2020, that they must regrettably rely on it in order to save democracy. Until a genuinely anti-establishment current manages to succeed where Sanders failed, we can expect the tidal wave of cynicism and hypocrisy to keep on rolling and the tyrannical grip of corporate power on American democracy to tighten with every election cycle. So there you go. Put me on any list. You shouldn't be afraid of any labels. We have to, in fact, move beyond them because they are irrelevant and redundant. What we're describing is a centralised grip on power that will not ever be rescinded unless we, the people, combine and rise up. This is precisely why we have to abandon these labels, find a new discourse, a new lexicon, a new rhetoric that's connected to principles and values that abide and sustain while they continue to cast aside any principle that ain't convenient into the way they like to run things with cash in their pockets and lies on their lips. But hey, that's just what I think. What do you think? You're at least as important as me, more important in your own life, right? You watch this video and carry on with your day. Hit me up in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a little look at this one. If you're interested in awakening your consciousness, sign up to my Awakening Side channel. Sign up to my mailing list too so you can see what I'm up to on a day-to-day basis. Like, for example, I'm touring all over the UK, Manchester, Plymouth, Liverpool, Bristol, Newcastle. There's a link in the description if you want to buy tickets on the mailing list we'll let you know as well stay free